This is a um, coating thickness gauge. And according to the specifications here, um, it can read in uh, micrometers um, 0 to 1500 micrometers and its resolution is 0.1 micrometers and its accuracy is 3% plus or minus um, plus 2 micrometers. So I was sent this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, it would cost you about $45. They haven't paid me for my review and my opinions remain my own. So in the box we have a little semi-hard clamshell carrying case has kind of a wrist strap and hanging loop and a zipper here. You open it up, you have the documentation that comes with it, um, a USB A to C charging cable, and the unit itself, which is underneath this little elastic band. And this is the sensor right there, and it has a little uh, two inch TFT display screen. The USB C charging port is up here, and then we have the user interface buttons there. Now it comes calibrated from the factory, but they have included some calibration test plates in surface substrates here. So they have a non-ferrous, probably aluminum, and then they have a ferrous, which is probably iron. And they also include here different thicknesses of things you can put on top of these guys here. Um, and so for example, here is the 50 micrometer or 1.97 mils piece of plastic. And if you put that on and measure it, it will hopefully come to a similar value. So let's try it out on some of these. All right, so it's saying zero, and that's right because there's nothing on top of it. I'm going to put the 50 mil calibration sheet. And so here it's um, 1.54 mils, and this is a 1.97 mils 50 micrometer. Let's change this to micrometer. It says 39. We're going to try that again. So it's 38, 38.8. So it looks like we might need to calibrate, but let me try a few others. Here's the thickest substrate, which is the 1,500 micrometers or 59 mils. So that did come out at 1,500 and it has the upper bound here. So it might say, well, it's either 1,500 or above. So this here is 250 micrometers. So it says 265. There's the 1,000. So we're at 1442. So it does look like it needs calibration here. Now this FE disc has a coating on the back, um, which I believe is a protective plastic coating. And I don't know if we're going to get different readings with this backside with that coating. So it says zero there. I'll put the 100 micrometer. And it's doing 81 here, 82. So it definitely does look like it needs to be calibrated. They have a calibration thing here. So it says calibration one, FE, ferrous, zero. So there it did that. Um, and now it wants calibration point two, which is 1.9 mils. And so that is 1.97 mils is 50 micrometers. And now it's jumping up to the 3.94 mils. And now it wants the 59.06, in this case 59.1. All right, so it is now calibrated. Let's try it here. It says zero. That there said 59.06, so that looks pretty good. Here is 1.97 mils, 1.95 mils, so pretty good once you calibrate it. All right, we're going to try this Astro AI um, paint thickness gauge on my cars and see what it says. So here, obviously, there's some issues. 
and it says NFE. Um, so maybe I have an aluminum hood on this car. So yes, the hood of this Toyota Prius is non-ferrous. It's aluminum and a magnet will not stick to it. The uh, quarter panel here is ferrous. All right, let's try the hood of this car. All right, 6.11 mils. Try a different location here. 6.39 mils. Five point seven five mils. We're going to try a door panel. You can see here it turns sideways when we're holding it sideways. Five point six four. I'm not getting beeps in all these cases. Six point four six. Five point seven five. That was a little bit off. 6.23. So you do have to hold it at a good straight angle. Um, if you come at a weird, weird angle, it gets a slightly thicker reading. Now, let's try a plastic body panel. So this body panel here is plastic. And it just doesn't read anything there. Now on the roof panel, I'm getting 2.49, 2.75, So it wasn't giving me any readings on the non-ferrous aluminum hood. I am going to calibrate it on the non-ferrous disc here and see if that makes it work on the non-ferrous materials. So I started it up and it comes in ferrous mode by default touch it to something that's non-ferrous, it goes NFE, does beep, 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 beeps. All right, push the calibration button. It wants calibration point one, which is zero micrometers, or just the reference material. Now it wants 50 mil micrometers, and up we go. I'm basically going to be touching this through each of the calibration sheets that they've provided um, all the way up till 1500 micrometers. And the final one is 1500 micrometers. So now it should be calibrated for non-ferrous. Let's give it a shot here just with the test setup. So yep, it says 1500 on the 1500 test sheet. This is the 250. 251, that's pretty close. This is the 50. Right arm. All right, now I've calibrated it for non-ferrous. I've set the units back to mils and we're gonna try this hood again. All right, 5.34 mils. Try down here. It's giving me a zero where all the paint has been scraped off the car. Let's try over here. Have a zero there. Let's try somewhere where the paint looks better. There's 5.5. Looks a little bit lighter in this area. 3.8 or 08. 3.75. I want to see what happens when I just go over to a steel body panel after using it on the non-ferrous. All right, I just flipped over. It says ferrous 3.81. Um, and so here, this 3.8 I think looks better than some of those four and five because I think this is kind of, you know, crinkled and you can see it sticking up. So I think when I s set this guy down, you know, it says, hey, I'm 4.7 mils up. But I think a lot of that's this surface texture on that paint that's kind of coming up. So I don't have any other reference sets to test this against to tell you for sure how accurate it is, but it seems to be working. So with the reference material they send, um, it always goes back to the same value with that reference material. And it seems to be correctly saying, hey, you know, there's no paint there and there's a lot thicker paint here. Um, so it seems to be doing a pretty good job of picking up the paint thickness once you have it calibrated. So this guy has a lot of other features where you can say, hey, you know, sample five points and then give me a reject or accept. So if you're doing a production line, you can program it to have, you know, the expected values and just to make alarm noises if it doesn't see the expected values. And it can do averages and, you know, the histogram of what you've been scanning and that type of stuff. But mostly, you know, if you just want to go put it down on a car and kind of get an idea of the paint thickness, it does you know, a real good job. It's real easy to use. So when you start it up, you want to make sure this is away from any metallic objects. 
see, I think at this price point, that's a pretty nice little coating thickness gauge.